Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update, Saturday, November 11th. Hope everybody had a good week of trading. Let's take a quick look at the markets and then we'll jump into the trades for the week. All right, so we opened up the week in the S&Ps after a monster up week. Had kind of a choppy sideways day, a little pop up, a little relief, and then Thursday after the bond auction, got a little hope. Saw some red, started going down, got a little volatility pumped back into the market with hopes and dreams of a continuation lower and some continued volatility pump. And then Friday completely ripped our hearts out. Here's the five minute version. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at VIX, you know, obviously the inverse, we've had a huge contraction. VIX just at 22 plus just a couple weeks ago, got a little hope of a, a little pump, and then Friday just completely ripped our hearts out. VIX back down to 14, unfortunately. So no volatility for you. Uh, NASDAQ, same thing, but even stronger on Friday to the upside. Uh, Russell, a little bit upside on Friday, and the Dow, pretty, pretty similar to the S&P. Uh, gold and silver heading lower for the week. Uh, notes and bonds kind of choppy sideways. The 10-year yield settling in at a little above 4.65. Uh, oil showed some weakness, a little bit of a pop on Friday, but continued weakness. Uh, natty gas slid lower all week. Soybeans, a little pullback after its uh, pretty decent-sized rally. Uh, wheat, not, a, not quite as strong. Corn, uh, a little bit weaker. Euro down for the week, pound down for the week, Bitcoin rocking above 37,000, and like I said, VIX settling in just above 14. All right, let's jump into our trades for the week. Uh, start with zero DTE, a decent little week for zero DTE, almost 20K, uh, and that's with me missing Thursday's power hour, which would have been a nice winner. Uh, but let's break these down by the different strategies for zero DTE, starting with my AM trades. So I took three of those, a little over 10K on those, one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. And then uh, DKS had three DKS trades, all three winners, a little over 4,500. Uh, no JSPs. Power Hour. So Power Hour was uh, a little bit flat for me. Um, actually, a little bit red. Yeah, minus 1,100. And like I said, I missed out on Thursday. I had a meeting. Still not happy about it. Would have been a nice winner. Uh, but everybody else in the community uh, had winners. So I was suffering from a little Power Hour FOMO on Thursday as I got done with my meeting uh, just after Tranche 3 entry time. Uh, so Monday... All three tranches were winners. Tuesday, all three tranches were losers. Uh, Wednesday, uh, tranche one and two were losers. Tranche three was a winner. And then on Friday, because I didn't do Thursday, uh, tranche one was a loser. And then tranche two and three were both uh, small winners. I had to combine them, as you see here, uh, because the I was sharing the same strikes, let them both expire, and they settled and I can't split them up. So if you look at this, so when they settled, you know, with 19, 19 contracts, seven of those should have been on tranche two, uh, 12 on tranche three, so I had to had to combine them. Uh, so net-net, Friday was a, a small winner for Power Hour. Uh, let's see, PM ratios. Make sure I get all those checked, yep. All right, so um, so for PM ratios, uh, did good. Three trades, uh, two winners, one scratch, plus 5,200 on those. Quiet lunches. Uh, a little bit red on the quiet lunch. Two winners, two losers, but the losers ended up being bigger than the winners, so... Minus, let me refresh this, get it to update, minus 3,300, almost 3,400 on those. And our good old buddy, Uncle Rick, came through in the clutch this week. Uh, three trades, actually, actually two. This one was a mistake. I should not have gotten in this, so once I realized it, I just bailed for small profit. 
uh, ended up would have ended up being a full winner, but I never should have been in to begin with. So, uh, as you can see, I flagged myself with a little mistake. Uh, but the other two winners, so plus uh, a little over four thousand for Uncle Rick. On the dynamic butterflies, just time flies. No closing trades. Yeah, these are just three opens. Um, and then dynamic calendars. Let me get all these checked because there are a bunch of them. And calendars ended up being pretty flat overall for the week. Slightly red, I believe, if I remember right. Yeah, minus 98 bucks. Uh, so loss in TGIF, TGIFs are really pissing me off this month, this year, but, um, yeah, took a little, took a loss on TGIF, uh, four, seven was a winner, five, seven, small winner, three, six winner, one, two loser, one, three, a winner, one, two, a winner, one, three, a winner, two, five, a winner, and one, two, a loser. So pretty small. And I took my first auto traded uh, trade with trade steward. So I'm excited about that. Uh, let's see. Next category is iron duck. Just took one off, I believe. Yeah. One winner for 220. And then lastly, options selling. I don't think I had any closing trades here. Let me double check. Yeah. No closing trades and option selling. I am just super, super light on positions right now. So that's what I was part of why I was hoping for that volatility spike to continue, get a continuation off the Thursday pump. But like I said, it just kind of ripped our hearts out. Didn't give it to us. I hate when the market doesn't give us what we want. Shouldn't be that way. It should always give us what we want. Uh, lastly, portfolio margin, uh, just two closing trades, one Humpty for plus 4,800 and one call swoosh minus 1,600. So plus 3,185 for the week. So that's it, my friends. Have a good weekend, and we will chat with you next week. Cheers.